About a month ago, I built this coffee table with a crayon inlay. It was sort of an experiment to see if it would even work. And surprisingly, it worked pretty well. That said, it left me with a lot of people asking how durable it was. And, well, it's about exactly as durable as a crayon. So I wanted to test out making an improved, more durable version. And that's what we're going to do today. So the first thing that I did was make a small version to test the technique that I planned on using, just to make sure that it would work before I spent several days doing the real thing. And I thought the test piece came out pretty good, so I decided to get started on the real thing. I started by prepping and gluing two boards together so that I could make my top, which is going to be about 18 inches wide and 60 inches long. And after that set up overnight, I was ready to start routing my groove and melting my crayons. So the big difference between this table and the last table is that this one's going to have a top coat of epoxy about a quarter of an inch thick. And this was actually my first time using epoxy on a project, so I'm definitely no expert. But I'll throw a link to what I used in the description so that you can learn more about it if you're interested. After the top was dry and I had knocked the epoxy back to flush with the wood, I used my table saw to cut the whole thing down to its finished size. And the reason that I did this after I poured the crayon in the epoxy was so that I didn't have to worry about it all spilling out since the rivers go to the edge of the table. Basically, it made the whole process a lot more simple. And speaking of simple, let's take a minute to thank this week's sponsor, Simply Safe. SimpliSafe offers incredibly effective, reliable, and customizable home security systems that are monitored by professionals 24-7 who will call in an emergency and send police help if needed. It was really easy and intuitive to set up and use. I think a screwdriver was about as complex as it got for me, and most of the components just used double-sided tape. Now, obviously everybody's house is different, but I think it took me like two hours to set up, and that included filming it. Anyhow, you can tell that SimpliSafe has taken the time to make their system nice. Things like how small and discreet their sensors are, or little things like reminding you if you've left the door or window open. On top of that, they offer really fair and honest prices with no contracts or hidden fees, and everything's equipped for worst case scenarios. So for example, if you were to lose power or Wi-Fi, or if your system is attacked, it's still gonna work. Personally speaking, I've had my system for about six months now, and it's been great so far. One of the unexpected benefits has been the nightly routine that it provides for my five-year-old. Long story short, all of a sudden, he became aware of our mortality and went through a phase of being worried about locked doors and closed windows before going to bed. So every night, we take a look at the blue glowing light, and that gives us the confidence to sleep tight. All right, so if you've been thinking about a home security system, or even if you have one that you think could be better, check out Simply Safe. Put a system together and see if it might be a better option for you. Just head over to simplysafe.com slash four eyes, or better yet, click the link in the description. Think simply safe. Okay, 
Let's set the top aside for a bit and start working on the base of the table. Here we're going to be using 8 quarter walnut boards that will get milled down to about an inch and a half thick. So at this point I have pieces that are perfectly square if you look at them this way. Next it was just a matter of cutting all of my pieces to varying lengths so that I could start assembling everything. And actually let's cut away to an animation so that we can see how everything's going to come together. So what I'm cutting the length is four pieces that are 15 and a quarter inches long, four pieces that are 15 and a half inches long, and four pieces that are 57 and a half inches long. The shortest pieces are going to become the legs. The other short pieces will be the stretches and aprons that run across the piece, and the long pieces will be the stretches and aprons that run along the piece. And then of course the top will go, well, on top. After everything was cut to size, I started assembling. So here I'm marking out screw locations, and my plan was to countersink two screws through each face where there was a connection, and then to backfill those with more crayon wax and epoxy. But we'll get back to that in a minute because first I have to finish cutting everything into the base that we're going to need to cut in. Here I'm making a chamfer to create a separation line between the base and the top which was quick and easy to just route in. And then here I'm using these figure eight clips, which is what we're gonna use to attach the base to the top. Okay, let's get back to plugging the screw holes with some crayon wax. So my first idea was to just jam some wax into the holes and melt it. And it was working, but it was also kind of lumpy looking. So I kept melting it further, and then it seemed like it just dripped right into the screw hole. So I guess I could have just put more until it stopped sinking in, but I decided to try something else. My next attempt was to melt some in this little silicone, I don't know, cupcake mold thing, I guess, and then pour it in. And this worked better, and I think with a little patience would be the right way to go. But I started to kind of sour on the idea for some reason. I guess I just figured that the top was enough color already. So I abandoned this idea altogether and cut some plugs instead. After having tried this technique two different ways, I can't fully commit to saying that one way is better than the other. But personally speaking, if it's a piece that I'm going to keep, I'll go with the all crayon approach. I think it's noticeably more vibrant, and I like the waxy sheen. Plus, I know that I'm not going to be using this technique in an area of my house where it's going to get beat up. And if an accident did happen, I could fix it pretty quick with a heat gun and a crayon. 
but if I were building this for somebody else, I'd probably err on the side of suggesting the epoxy overlay approach. Here, there's nothing to worry about. We could have Michael flatly river dance on this river table and there's not gonna be any hard feelings. So yeah, that's it. No real conclusion, or I guess no sway from me. You take your pick, and whichever side of the line you decide to color on, well, I guess the inside is really all just a matter of perspective anyway. Special thanks to Rachel Mansky, Phil Plant, Yanis Cassis, Kostin Makanu, or Makanu, Frank Pinto, Haley Moran, and the rest of my Patreon members for making these videos possible. You all are my single biggest source of income at this point. And I try to say thank you in the form of t-shirts and other goodies, but I know that it can never be enough, so I'll just say it again. Thank you. Seriously. For everything. And if you want to find out more about how you can support the show too, check out the Patreon link in the description and see if it's right for you. And as always, no pressure. Alright, see you in the next one.